Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship here at St. John's this day for our online virtual service. We are delighted to be back in person, 8 and 1030, in the sanctuary. Last week was our first time. It was wonderful. We're looking forward to it, hoping to see you uh, a coming Sunday. But of course, we will continue the online services. Um, in the month of July, the hope is to actually have the live service live stream, so you'll be watching with us live. We do also continue bi-weekly outside services, and the next one of those is today. So if you're not ready to come in the building, but you are ready to come outside, we'd love to see you at five o'clock on the front lawn. Bring your lawn chair uh, for a wonderful kind of casual service of Holy Communion, some singing. We can be a little bit more free. We no longer have to wear masks, though of course, you're always welcome to wear a mask outside. Inside, we're still wearing them for services. Our Appalachia Service Project is gearing up. At the end of the month, we'll be commissioning our young people and adults as they prepare to go to Kentucky over the first week in July. Uh, but we need some help getting them there. There are some extra costs due to COVID, some extra travel issues. Um, so if you could help sponsor them, there is a sponsorship event going on. Uh, Laura Sider has prepared a wonderful board full of activities. It's either as you enter church on Sunday or out in the narthex during the week. Even if you want to just call in the office and ask what are the options, we'd be happy to find a, a way for you to support this ministry. Next Sunday, our denomination, the EOCA, uh, and our church then on Sunday will be commemorating the Emmanuel Nine. Remember the tragedy of those nine dear souls um, killed at Mother Emmanuel in Charleston during Bible study. And our church has committed to annually holding a services to remember them, to commemorate them, to repent the sin of racism, and to pray for God's mercy as we move forward. Do join us in worship, uh, whether in person or online for that. And if you are in person at nine o'clock next Sunday, our anti-racism committee will be holding a conversation in Hinman Hall for an hour, both to talk more about the Emmanuel Nine and our continued work, gospel work of anti-racism. We are in the month of June, and this is a season of graduations. So whether you've already graduated from college or are graduating from high school, we want to honor you. Please send in uh, a picture, some information about where you've graduated from and what's next uh, by June 18th to me so that our whole church family can celebrate you and can honor you at this major accomplishment. Our Social Justice Social Ministry Committee has challenged our congregation with a rally for social ministry. Five weeks, five projects that we've historically supported, usually with our, our time and our hands, uh, but our ministries that have continued and really could use some capital, some cash. So for five weeks, $1,000 for each organization. This week, we are supporting Bridges. Bridges is the feeding ministry that provides lunches to people in urban areas. Traditionally, they went on runs uh, three times a week in the New York and Newark. Throughout the pandemic and continuing, they've been providing lunches daily, seven days a week without fail to people right here in New Jersey in Newark. Please uh, give generously as you're able. At the end of the month, on June 27th, we're going to have a party, the actual rally, celebrating this work that we've done, hopefully raising more than $5,000, um, having a food drive, some music, some fellowship uh, out here on the parking lot. So do, do plan for that. I'm really excited about that. One last word about today's service. Our online service, which you all are a part of, has a guest preacher. I am delighted that the sermon today is being brought to us by the Reverend Kate Carlisle. Kate is a Presbyterian USA pastor serving up in Boston, a classmate of mine from Yale Divinity School, and truly one of my very best friends in the whole world. I'm delighted that Kate has agreed to preach to us today and bring a word that we share in common. Let us worship the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit, and become a noble cedar. Under it every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the dry tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. According to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed 
on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches. So the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello and greetings from Massachusetts. I'm Reverend Kate Carlisle and I'm a minister in the Presbyterian Church USA, which you might remember as a full communion partner of the ELCA, and I'm a member of the Presbytery of Boston. These days I'm serving at the Church of the Covenant in downtown Boston, working primarily in faith formation for children and youth. Pastor Scalett and I are dear friends from our seminary days, and so I've had the chance to worship at St. John's a few times over the last few years. I'm grateful for the invitation to preach today and for the technology that makes it possible for us to share and worship despite our distance. What a blessing it is to gather together around the Word of God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, my radishes bolted. You see, I have a plot at the community garden in my neighborhood where for the last three summers, I've taken my turn tending 50 square feet or so of famously rocky Boston soil on this land, the ancestral home of the Massachusetts people. I have been gardening on and off for years. I would hardly say that I'm a good gardener by most measures, but I do love it. And for me, it's equal parts hobby and spiritual practice. Spring sometimes comes late to New England, and I grew up in Kentucky where we could plant hot weather crops in May or even earlier. Waiting until June to plant tomatoes and peppers so I feel like I really have a garden going, especially this year. When I'm eager to be outside and in the world and to see new things blooming, waiting was testing my patience. So a couple months back, I planted a whole bunch of radishes, more than I could ever eat myself, as a way to bide my time for everything else. So I've been picking them a half dozen or so at a time for a few weeks now, leaving the rest in the ground to keep growing. The last few, the littlest ones, were still in the ground. And I was getting to the point where I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and pick these soon before the weather gets too hot. And then the weather got too hot. All of a sudden, I no longer had small clusters of leaves marking the radish root growing in the soil. I have flowering shrubs, hip high, with stems as big around as the radishes, branches and leaves and white and purple flowers gone to seed. In today's reading from the Gospel of Mark, Jesus tells his followers two parables, comparing the kingdom of God to plants. First, he says, the kingdom of God is like this. Somebody scatters some seeds. The sower goes about the rest of their life, sleeps at night, and wakes by day. Meanwhile, the seed goes about its life, sprouting and growing and becoming something much bigger, much more than the seed from which it came. From dirt and seed comes a stalk. 
than a grain head, than the full grain. All of a sudden, it's time for harvest. The sower finds that it's time to reap. Then Jesus again compares the kingdom of God to a mustard seed. Mustard, he says, starts with a little bitty seed that becomes a great big plant. Now mustard is a weed that grows where it's not invited. It's like dandelions or kudzu or honeysuckle in that way. It takes over. It doesn't wait for permission to grow, and it grows big enough to provide shelter and shade. But it's also mustard. It leaves a bitter taste in some people's mouths. That's okay. It grows. It blooms. It flourishes. Jesus doesn't use a plant that's big or impressive or lives for decades or centuries, but one that is scrappy and persistent to help those listening to him imagine the kingdom of God. In a world where empires talked of themselves as cedars, Jesus talks about mustard, a different sort of plant entirely. Parables, as we know, are a tool for understanding, and Jesus spoke as his disciples were able to hear. Parables help us, as they did the disciples, to imagine the unimaginable. They teach us how to look out for God's action in our world. The first parable today helps us imagine growth and transformation of a plant moving towards fruit and harvest. But the second reminds us that the shape and size and timing of that harvest may not look at all like what we expect. Pay attention, Jesus says. Pay attention and you may catch a glimpse of the kingdom of God setting roots and blossoming forth into this world. One of the things that we Presbyterians and Lutherans have in common is that we really like to talk about grace, right? Grace this and grace that. God is always at work in God's grace. So much of God's work happens on its own, invisible, under the surface, slowly and gradually by our time, and then all at once. What looks like a miracle a sudden transformation is so often the end of long, slow, hidden changes and growth of roots beneath the surface and the plans God was working all along. The good news is that God's grace is always already at work. God's great power, God's never failing love, always come first. God is always busy and active in the world, whether or not we notice. God is always busy in God's power and love, whether or not we even cooperate. The kingdom of God is close at hand, friends, even when it seems like that could not be less true. Jesus calls us to be beloved community in a violent and fractured world. Jesus speaks a word of abundance and equity to all who suffer from scarcity and oppression. Jesus says, look out for the mustard seeds. The weeds will inherit the earth. So friends, have you been paying attention? What are you seeing? Is anything about to bolt and bloom in your life? What has God already been growing in you, in the church, in the world, while nobody noticed the seeds and the roots taking hold? What transformations are already taking place? What have you seen? What is God's grace doing? What is God's power doing? What is God's love doing? And in what ways are we called to participate in the ongoing work of God's love and God's justice. Can you pay more attention? Can you look at all the seeds and start to imagine a whole messy explosion of flowers? Because that's the thing, friends, it is a little messy. Jesus doesn't tell his disciples that the empire of heaven is like, 
if someone took a silk flower arrangement and stuck it on a table and it sat there. Jesus doesn't tell them a parable about a regular seed that grew into a medium-sized, well-behaved plant that knew its place. And it never grew too many branches, and it never cast shade, never propagated, never bloomed where it wasn't wanted, never held a nest or fed a starving wanderer, never made anybody sneeze. And it looked pretty enough, because in this vision God does hate an eyesore, while the kingdoms of this world carried on. No. Jesus tells us about a conspiracy of mustard seeds. He tells us that God's righteousness is prone to bolt. Hear the good news and rejoice, sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ. The kingdom of God is come very, very near. It has been growing all along, and the fields are just about ripe for harvest. Should we get to work? Amen. Now to the one who by the power it work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ever ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the Church, for the world, and for all people in any need. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united to live in your truth and bound together in bonds of love. Raise up your church on earth that it might be the body of Christ. Strengthen and support Elizabeth, our presiding bishop, Tracy, our bishop, all pastors and deacons, and all the baptized people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to the honor of your glory. Make us good stewards of this earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land, O God. Give wisdom to the President and the Congress and all leaders, and of all the leaders of nations, that they may strive for justice tempered with mercy. Bring an end to violence and strife, end suffering and disparity, and grant us peace on earth in our day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, for all people in any need. We pray for the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the refugee and the orphan, the unemployed and the underemployed, the dying, the mourning, those in prison and even for our enemies as you have commanded. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage to face their suffering and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for all those whom we remember now, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly. Build up and raise up this congregation, O God. Give us wisdom to act in accordance with your will. Help every member to have a passion to share the gospel every day, in every way, in every place that they are planted. Change us, O God, to be the congregation you would have us be. Bless our ministry partners, St. Stephen's Grace Newark and Bethlehem, New Orleans. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have died in the faith. We commend them to your care and pray that we may be faithful all our days and at length join with them in your heavenly realm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We have been blessed with blessings so abundant we can neither name them or count them. And yet God entrusts to us care for this hurting world. So we bring tithes and offering signs of our thanksgiving and gratitude and a trust that God's goodness might be shared with the world.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.